Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Mizin Mishnas from Department of Emergency Medicine. I'll be uh, dealing with uh, the newer updates in stroke and uh, diabetic emergency management. So, uh, in previously we were using uh, the algorithm FAST for early de detection of stroke. F stands for uh, any facial deviation, A for arm weakness, and S for, S for slurring of speech, and T for time. Now the recent update is, it, is, it has become B fast. B for uh, balance, whether the patient is having giddiness, and E for eye, that is, uh, patient is having any blurring of vision. So it was found that 40% of the patients with acute stroke would be missed using fast alone. The inclusion of gait and visual symptoms leads to reduction in missed strokes. Next update is regarding uh, management of uh, blood pressure in stroke patients. We all know that hypertension alone in, in, or in combination with risk factors accounts for 80% of ICH. BP lowering is the single most important predictor for better outcome in acute STH. So uh, b regarding BP targets in acute ICH, for uh, patients with systolic blood pressure more than uh, 220, aggressive BP reduction is advised. And uh, in patients with uh, b uh, BP of uh, systolic blood pressure of 150 to 220 mmHg, BP should be lowered to around 140 mmHg. And uh, while discharging, BP control in ICH patient post-discharge, target BP should be around 130 to 80 mmHg. And in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, systolic blood pressure should be maintained less than 160 mmHg and with a MAP of around 110. Um, regarding management of hypertension in patients with acute ischemic stroke, uh, aggressive lowering of BP may lower cerebral perfusion pressure, thereby aggra aggravating brain ischemia. Very high BP, on the other hand, can worsen cerebral edema, resulting in poor outcome. So uh, both AHA and European Society guidelines indicate that if uh, a patient with acute ischemic stroke is, is not a if he is not a candidate for uh, thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy, a BP should not be reduced till uh, if BP is not more than 220 bar 120 mmHg. And if he is a candidate for thrombolysis or uh, mechanical thrombectomy, before the procedure, BP should be less than 185 bar 110 mmHg. And post-procedure, BP should be less than 180 bar 105 mmHg for the next 24 hours. Next update is regarding uh, tentic place versus altiplase in acute ischemic stroke. Uh, currently, we are using Altiplase uh, for uh, thrombolyzing a patient with acute ischemic stroke uh, coming within a uh, window period. Now, um, various studies have been going on regarding Tantiplase and its advantages. The, recently, there has been interest in thrombolytic with Tantiplase, a modified version of Altiplase due to its lower cost, ease of administration. Uh, the main advantages of Tantiplase over Altiplase is that it has got longer half-life, greater fibrin specificity, lesser likelihood of fibrinogen depletion, and ease of administration. A single dose, a single bolus, rather than a bolus followed by one hour infusion of altiplase. And other benefits of tantiplase is that, uh, lesser chance of post-thrombolytic bleeding, uh, lesser, uh, functional outcome at 90 days is better, and increase better recanalization. So sufficient data to support regulatory approval of tantiplase as a global replacement of altiplase in acute stroke will come only from the ongoing randomized control trials. Next update is regarding um, efficiency and soft safety of using dual versus monotherapy antiplatelet agents in secondary stroke prevention. Uh, compared with monotherapy, the use of dual antiplatelet treatment uh, after stroke decreases the risk of uh, recurrent stroke or TAA, but increases the risk of major hemorrhage. The use of dual antiplatelet for uh, less than 30 days after minor non-cardioembolic ischemic stroke is superior to monotherapy for prevention of recurrent stroke or TAA. Except for the combination of aspirin and ticagrelor, the use of dual antiplatelet therapy for less than 30, 30 days does not increase the risk of major hemorrhage. Next update is regarding acute stroke treatment in anticoagulated patient. Direct oral anticoagulants like factor 10A inhibitors like rivaroxaban, apixaban, and direct thrombin inhibitor like dabigatran are the mainstay of stroke prevention in patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation. Oral anticoagulants uh, therapy is relative contraindication for IV thrombolysis, 
but emerging evidence supports its use in selected patients. Anticoagulant reversal in patients presently with stroke remains a major issue. Specific anticoagulation reversal like for vitamin K antagonist can be reversed using vitamin K along with fast reversal strategies including uh, PCCs to prevent re-increase in INR. Idalizumab, a dabigatron antagonist antidote, showed 100% reversal within four hours after the administration. Next update is regarding endovascular thrombectomy. So uh, uh, in the morning section, we have discussed about various uh, th uh, me uh, mechanical thrombectomy, aspiration thromb suction thrombectomy. The management of ischemic stroke has undergone a remarkable transformation in the past decade, largely led by endovascular thrombectomy with contributions th through improvement in thrombectomy devices and medical management. Recent trials have also demonstrated improved outcomes with endovascular thrombectomy in posterior circulation stroke and larger stroke, which will continue to impact stroke care in the future. Next, uh, we'll move on to diabetic emergencies. We have already discussed regarding DKA. In euglycemic DKA is an emerging, emergency, emerging complication of diabetes associated with increased use of uh, S-glute 2 inhibitor drugs like dapagliflozin. Euglycemic DKA is D, uh, like DKA, but lacks the classic, uh, classic hyperglycemic component. Blood glucose is generally less than 200 milligram per deciliter. Ketonemia will be there. And one of the following, pH can be less than 7.3. Serum bicarbonate is less than 18. And anion gap will be more than 10. In euglycemic DKA, there is low renal threshold for glucosuria in the presence of an increased rate of gluconeogenesis and free fatty acid metabolism. s 2 inhibitors increase renal clearance of glucose by inhibiting reabsorption at the glute transporters in the renal proximal to, to, uh, tubular epithelium. One notable difference is that, due to the absence of pronounced hyperglycemia, patients may not experience the characteristic osmotic symptoms like polyuria, polydipsia, or uh, altered mental status. A very, very high suspicion is needed for the accurate diagnosis and timely management. Next update is regarding glucagon as a therapeutic approach to severe hypoglycemia. Uh, this is regarding nasal, uh, nasal glucagon. Uh, this new formulation is a dry powder which does not require preparation or reconstitution and is available in single-use device. Glucagon is rapidly and passively absorbed through anterior nasal mucosa. It is more comfortable for the patient's care, caregivers during hypoglycemic events. Uh, these are the recent updates in diabetic emergencies and stroke. Thank you.